Hey guys, EVP Man here, and if you're considering the Apple Magic Keyboard, this is the brand new keyboard that was released with the 2020 iPad Pro, well, you're gonna wanna watch this video. This is EVP Man Tech Reviews, and today we're gonna cover everything you should know before you spend over $300 on this keyboard. Let's get right to it. Know what you got is deeper within And your friends don't even know what you got now in this video, we're gonna take a look at everything that you need to know before you spend anywhere from $299 to $349 for a keyboard like this. There's a lot to love with this keyboard, but there's also a lot that's missing. Let's get right to it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell icon to get notified when new videos become available. Now one of the things that Apple has not improved with this case is the fact that it is a dust magnet and it picks up fingerprints like crazy. So take a look at the case as it is right now. I haven't wiped this down. I've been using it in an office setting uh, for the last several days and you can see um, just all the fingerprints that you see on here. I'll flip it on this side so you can see the same thing. And again, you can see how this is. So that's kind of one of the disappointing parts about the case. Now from a protection perspective, you're not gonna get a lot of protection with this case. So as we take a look at the top here, you'll notice that it really comes really close to the actual uh, actual iPad itself. And you know that there've been a lot of problems with iPads bending. Uh, they dent very easily, especially in this area right here, because this is the weakest area uh, for the iPad. And you can see how this goes all the way around. And the other big problem with this case is that if you do rest it in a briefcase or a large purse, uh, what will happen is if you have these buttons facing downwards, if I flip this like this and it's facing downwards, the likelihood for these buttons getting pressed because this is so flush is highly likely, which means you're probably gonna end up with a lot of screenshots, you know, just stuff, wonky stuff happening. And the same thing is happening here with the power button. Because the power button here is so exposed, you're gonna have a problem where this thing is gonna turn on. So what I advise you to do is, uh, really, if you're gonna put it in a bag, that you place it this side down. Uh, this is really gonna help uh, prevent anything uh, of these buttons right here being pressed. So this side down, because this is the area that you have the most protection. Now the case does have a USB-C charging port here, and this USB charging port is going to be used only for power. So you cannot put a hard drive here, you cannot put any accessories, it's solely for power. Now it does a decent job in the back here. If you look at the camera module right here, it is well protected. Now another area that you should be aware of about this case is the fact that you can only use it in one mode. So let's take a look at this here for a second. So this is my iPad uh, 2019 version and you'll notice how I can open up this case completely, which means if I wanna use a pencil, I can. I can actually use this for any kind of writing if I wanna do handwriting. And let's face it, sometimes I'm in a meeting, I may choose to use a type, the keyboard to type, or I may use my uh, Apple Pencil just to take some notes. So it's really easy to do. I do have a UAG case on this, that's why it has the ability to kind of stow uh, the pencil, but this case does not have the ability to stow the pencil at all. And again, this is my 2019 version iPad with the keyboard uh, that came with that version, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and, and close this now. Now let's take a look at the Apple keyboard, the Magic Keyboard. So with this one, when you open it, one of the nice things about when you open it is that it's really sturdy. It gives you kind of like the feel that you're opening up a laptop. It's, it's The hinges have that much tension. But what you notice is I can only open up this far. So I cannot use an Apple Pencil unless I'm gonna be in a meeting with someone and I'm gonna have this side popping up and I'm kind of like you know looking over like this. Not functional at all and it means that you have to take your iPad outside the case, which I'm not a fan of. So I, I don't know why they went through that design. Maybe it's because it's the only way they could get that stability, but you can't do that. So if we go back to this normal view, and I'm gonna put it right here for a second. We'll open this up. Uh, you know, I think that the, the tension on it is really nice. So, you know, this really works uh, really nicely when it comes to um, how stiff it is, and it doesn't fall open. Uh, but again, you cannot open it and use it for uh, an Apple Pencil. You have to take it out. Now, inserting your iPad is pretty simple, right? So I'm just gonna take it out. It's magnetically placed. Um, and all you have to do is, you'll notice that there's some contact points right here. These are the contact points that are used to charge and also enable actually the keyboard. And then here are the contact points on your iPad. All you do is you place it in place like this and then immediately you have the um, the keyboard is actually charged. And as you can see, the keys are nicely lit as well. And I'm gonna show you what they look like in a second. Now, the other thing to be aware of of the keyboard is the fact that you do not have any multimedia buttons. So let's see, let's make sure that that's coming up. You'll notice right here, there's no, um, I would say, media button. So you can't 
increase or decrease the, vo the, the volume. You cannot change the brightness. You cannot go home. You cannot play or pause. There are no media buttons. So this is purely, and no function keys. So this is purely, you know, the, the keys that you have here, which are your numerical keys, and then the keypad that you'll type. So that's pretty much it. And then when it comes from an angle perspective, you're also very limited. So I can put it in this angle. I can tilt it in this angle up to this angle. And then that's, uh, that's pretty much as far as it goes. And then obviously I have it closed as well. So now that we've covered what seems to be a lot of the negatives about the case, let's talk about all the positives. First of all, the keyboard. Keyboard is super duper responsive. Um, I love the fact that you have a lit keyboard that is powered by the iPad and that I don't have to worry about charging anything. I like the spacing, it works really well. Typing on this is delightful. It's like if you had a laptop, it actually makes the iPad feel more like it's a laptop. And overall, I would say the functionality that you have while it's limited from the keyboard perspective, what they've done here works really well. Now, the big question is how useful is the trackpad? And I can say in my workflow for what I use, I do a lot of typing. I also do a lot of reviewing of, of documents and also creating scripts. I do video editing like you can see right here. And I find that I don't really use a trackpad that much. I find myself still touching the screen more than actually using the trackpad. Now, one area that I do use a trackpad a lot in is really the multitasking. So being able to swipe over to the left or to the right to get into a different application is something that I find incredibly useful. So it'll be interesting if you have the iPad Pro and you're using a trackpad, let me know how much you use the trackpad option. Now, for those of you curious about how does the Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro compare to the previous version keyboard, I just put them here side by side. From an angle perspective, I just wanna say, if you notice here, the angles are very similar. So I can tilt it this way, and if I were to take this keyboard here and bring it out, you'll notice that from an angle perspective, they're almost perfectly aligned. Uh, the one thing I do like about this is because of how it's elevated, especially if you're doing Zoom or WebEx and you're using the camera, it does give you a better angle. So as opposed to this one, because it's resting so low and this one's a little bit higher, you know, you have less of the effect where the camera's facing upwards and more where the camera is actually facing more towards you. So this works really well in those settings. But as far as the, uh, as the angles themselves go, you know, this is what it takes to switch angles and you'll notice how it locks into position um, and it's a little bit hard. And over here, you'll notice that it's just a tilt, something as easy as this to get it going. So now I've turned off my key light and I just wanna show you what the keyboard actually looks like when it's illuminated. So as you can see here, this is the illumination that you're gonna get. Uh, it does a really nice job with the illumination and the neat thing about this is that if you go into the actual software itself of your iPad, you're gonna be able to configure this. So let me show you what you can do. Now, if you'd like to increase the brightness of the keyboard or dim them further, all you have to do is go into general, go into keyboard, go into hardware keyboard, and you'll be able to adjust it there. Now you can also make some adjustments to the trackpad by simply going into general, trackpad, and as you can see here, you can modify the trackpad speed and also make some adjustments around how clicks react when touching the trackpad. So guys, that wraps up our review of the Apple Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro 2019 and 2020 with the trackpad. Hope this helps with your buying decision. I hope it helps you understand you know, some of the limitations, but also some of the pros. I think it's one of the best accessories that Apple has created for the iPad. I will be using it, but just remember, the pencil, Apple Pencil limitations that we just discussed are still present. Let me know what you thought about this video. Would love to hear from you and see you in the next one.